Is there really anything special about vision? I think vision is special. And I think you do too, for a variety of reasons. You can really nerd out on how cool the brain is and how cool vision is within the brain. And when you do, then you start to find some things that make vision unique. More real estate, more neurological cortex. Real estate is taken up by the visual sense than any other sense, more than taste, touch, smell. Vision gets more real estate, gets more neurological processing space than any other sense. Why is that? Well, because evolution has led us to prioritize that visual experience. There's some cool illusions where like maybe somebody's mouth is doing something different than what you're hearing. When people sort of create these like weird tricks that might go on YouTube and go viral and people are trying to figure out what did I hear? What did I see his mouth doing? And what comes up is that people prioritize what they see over what they're hearing when the two are incompatible or kind of like out of sync. Every time. Yeah, every time, right? If you have to bet on it, bet on bet on what it is that you're looking at rather than what you're seeing. And why is that? Well, I guess a couple other things too, right? Like we can see super far. You can see like a flickering candle on a horizon if it was a totally clear sky. Several miles away, you can see the International Space Station floating up in the night sky, right? Like hundreds of miles away. Our eyes are amazing and we prioritize what we see. And I think that's because we never, we rarely get the experience of having our visual experience second guessed. Oftentimes we're having a conversation maybe in a loud restaurant and we know that we didn't hear the person right. And so we say like, oh, did you say that? Or like, oh, I thought you said this. And they're like, no, I didn't say that. So people will correct us when our ears get it wrong or we're tasting something amazing and we can't quite figure out what spices were in here. And so we know that our tongue isn't quite picking up the taste the right way. And that's why we read the menu to see what are the ingredients or we ask the chef, like, what did you put in this? It tastes amazing. So we know that our tongue is getting it wrong, or you might be touching something and you look at the tag to see what sort of textile was used in this really amazing piece of clothing that you're looking to buy. So we know that our sense of touch isn't quite getting it right, but rarely do we have that experience of having our eyes get updated, where we're looking at something, oh, I think I'm looking at my mom. Oh, no, actually it was actually my husband. Like, okay, like that never happens, (laughs) right? That we have gotten vision as wrong as we might get any other thing that we're experiencing through any other sense. We trust our visual experience. We have a sort of a naive realism that what we see reflects the world the way it actually is because it's never really fully tested. We never get the input or the feedback that you've seen something wrong until a visual illusion pops up on social media, right? Like the dress example. And then like, you know, chaos erupts. I thought the dress was blue. I know I thought it was gold. I don't remember the options because I see it as blue. So... <laughs> And it's like dividing up families and friendships because you've like seen something that the other person just literally cannot see. And that's why we love those examples when they pop up in social media when they do is because it defies all of our previous expectations. That is a moment that gives us a different, unexpected insight about the world, that it challenges us to see something that we hadn't seen before or it induces or tricks us into seeing something that we wouldn't have otherwise have seen. And so it's those rare moments that I think are actually really important for understanding what do our eyes normally do because we wouldn't find these examples so surprising, so engaging, so shocking if we had routinely gotten the experience of realizing we're not seeing the world the way that it is. That is why I think vision is special and why it can be thought of as a tool that we can add to our toolkit for how to better accomplish our goals. I'm not saying that we should just only focus on imagining the world through an attentional spotlight, but maybe that's something that we can employ strategically on occasion when we think it's gonna best help us, when we need an extra little push to cross the literal or metaphorical finish line. But it doesn't have to be the only tactic that we use. Just like it's not bad to use vision boards, but let's use something else also. It's not, it's not bad to talk to ourselves in encouraging ways, but let's try adding another tool to our tool belt in case that's not enough to get the job done. So I do think that there's great power in thinking about our visual experience alongside other tactics that we might use for meeting our goals. 